What's up, everyone? Brett Mix here, and welcome to another edition of the Monday Night Wars, this time on the WCW side. Hit like and subscribe if you're enjoying these reviews. I archive them in special years-by-year year events, so you can take a look at the each year, wherever you are following the Monday Night Wars. You can go back and watch them in any order. This is week 88, the 92nd episode of Nitro, but the 88th week they go head-to-head -head with the WWF. Nitro beats Raw for the 51st week in a row. The scores were 3.3 for Nitro, and Raw got a 2.4. So they did a huge win for this week, once again by the same ratings as last week, exactly the same, a 0 0.9 victory. Through 88 weeks, Nitro has got 69 wins, WWF has 17 wins, and there's been two draws, so that's a huge winning record. This is the Nitro with the winning 3.3 rating. Shivani welcomes us to the show from Mason Coliseum in Mason, Georgia, live on TNT, June the 23rd, 1997. After last week's epic NWO entrance from Chicago, this week we open with a shot of Hogan and Robin attacking the giant Luger after the end of last week's Nitro and the spray painting NWO on their backs. The Nitro theme plays and Mean Gene says we are in the heart of wrestling country. Mean Gene introduces DDP to the stage. He has a surprise partner that will take on Savage at Hall. Gene alludes to it and DDP says, I love surprises. And DDP says he can't wait for Bash to the Beach. Kimberly says she hates surprises, but she says she's got a match between DDP and Hall for tonight as the crowd chair, and that's the main event for later. A good, simple opening segment that gets the DDP some screen time and hypes up the main event. That's all you need to do. Hype up the main event or build towards a pay-per-view. Kevin Nash isn't here tonight, so commentary wonders how Hall is going to fare on his own against DDP in the main event slot. Damien and LaParka take on Public Enemy. LaParka and Damien get the win. A double clothesline by the Public Enemy. Rocko Rock and Damien with a knee splash to the outside, and uh, both teams went over the top ropes to the floor. Got, Grunge got a hot tag. All this offense, then a suicide plancha up to the table that no, no one was on the table, did them in. A chair shot from behind, and LaParka and Damien get a huge upset victory. I rated the match a star and a quarter. Mean Gene then introduces Eddie Guerrero, and he says he hasn't been released medically, and Chavo offered. He didn't take his place last week. Eddie says the title uh, there's a title shot versus six tonight, and he wants his nephew Chavo to get the title shot, so he'll get it later for the Cruiserweight title. We had Jericho versus Alex Wright. Wright comes out dancing. Jericho found his footing. He, he was like a 1995 DDP. Almost there, but not quite as far as a wrestling personality goes. Wright works over Jericho, a long whip into the safety rail, but wastes precious moments jumping into a drop kick. Wright does his dancing, and the fans hated it as Jericho hits the line salt and a thrust kick. Jericho with a powerbomb into the Boston Crab that he calls the walls of Jericho, and two and a half stars as Jericho beats Alex Wright this week. The Steiner brothers take on Harlem Heat for the number one contendership for the tag team titles, which the Outsiders hold in the NWO. This is going to be a good physical This is a match. This is a pay-per-view worthy match. Steiner with a great power suplex, and uh, Stevie Ray went to work methodically on Rick Steiner, the dog-faced gremlin, when he was in the ring as he barked. He grappled him down to the mat some more and then did an arm bar. Booker T went tagged into the spin Rooney and a sidekick attempt got a side suplex by Rick in midair. The Steiners tried their top rope bulldog, but Harlem Heat blocked it. Then Rick Steiner got the bulldog, and they got the three counts. So the Steiners are the number one contenders after the match. I rated it two stars and three quarters. Steiners and Bagwell argue over the by who has bigger biceps as Bagwell comes out to the ring. He says his partner with partnership with Thornton in the NWO is called Delicious and Vicious. He's vicious, I'm delicious, says Bagwell. And uh, they uh, they taught they said they're going to be there for Hall and Nash should they need them. He says, the Outsiders, we're looking for you as number one contenders in Las Vegas next week. That's what the Steiners said. So the Nitro will be in Vegas next week, and the Steiners want the Outsiders. Hector Garza then beat Villano 4. This is Hector Garza's second appearance. Uh, standing moonsault for the three count. I rated it two stars. It was actually a pretty good, decent match they had together. Me and Gene introduces Lex Luger and the Giant. Gene says the tag match versus Hogan and Robin is on for the match at the beach. Luger then says he is sickened and disgusted by last week spray painting both guys with the NWO. Luger says he's spoken to make sure security measures are taken, and at the beach it will be equal fitting. Giant says he's faced Hogan in the past, and they're going to get it, basically. Pyros go off for the second hour as we begin it with Six defending his cruiserweight title against Chavo Guerrero Jr. Chavo steps in for his Uncle Eddie and gets a title shot, as we alluded to earlier in the program. Six comes out with Hall. Nash isn't here tonight again, apparently, but the pants pop for Hall when he comes out with Six. 
Chavo with a nice standing Hurricane Rana after a leapfrog and a nice run off the ropes. Six takes a second on the outside. Six dodges a springboard crossbody out of the corner. Instead, and lands a nice spinning thrust kick. Six corners him and hits a jumping spinning kick, choking him out. Bronco Buster in the corner by six. It wasn't called that yet, but that's what the move was. Hall is in real close to make sure there is extra leverage. Eddie stands on the ramp watching the rest of the match. Hall gets an outsider's edge from behind the official, and six wins it that way with a buzzkill submission move. Gave the match two and a half stars as Mongo, Steve McMichael, then takes on Conan. McMichael has been having problems with Kevin Green, the football player, in recent weeks. McMichael with running lariats as there are three-point stance and spears Conan. Conan tries to take the legs out of Mongo, the bigger man, trying to get him down to his vertical base. Hugh Morris storms to the ring with a kendo stick, but Steve McMichael hits a tombstone pile driver at that moment, and Mongo wins. They gave it a half a star. They show a video package of Kevin Sullivan and Chris Benoit hyping their rivalry. Next, we got Roddy Piper, who says he's here to clean up some rumors in an interview with me and Gene in the middle of the ring. Piper asked if Flair betrayed him at Slamboree. And Piper says to put it to rest because him and Flair are good friends, old time friends. Piper said, however, Flair has his quirks. He says that Flair jokes and Rick comes to the ring to join Piper. He says, hot rod, let me reiterate some comments from last week. You are my friend. I can't do Flair's voice. Maybe a little bit. I will stand by your side, Flair says, as he took on the NWO when Piper was vacationing with Jenny McCarthy. He was the one wrestling six in Hall, and Piper laughs about it. Mongo and Ben walk up to the ring. Piper with a Batman and Robin and a Dante's Peak reference. Mongo tries to get into it with Piper. Mongo says bad things to Piper. Flair tries to be the man in the middle here to settle the heat and hostility. Piper then drops Benoit and Mongo. Flair, too, as Benoit was talking about Piper's spine. And Piper just lost it on Benoit. So Mongo hit him with the briefcase. And then all three men started beating on Piper, including Flair. The Clipper, the Crippler crossface was on Piper. Flair and the Horseman just uh, just completely taking out Roddy Piper. So no more friendship between Flair and Piper, it looks like. Ernest the Cat Miller and Glacier defeated High Voltage, Kenny Chaos, and Robbie Rage. Ernest the Miller with his WCW in-ring debut here. Glacier worked over both guys as Wrath and Mortis walked by the entrance and stared on. Glacier with some high-risk moves. Rage double-teamed as Miller hits a high-jumping round kick to get the three. Glacier and Miller win in the end as Wrath and Mortis were both out there staring on. I gave the match a star. They then show a cool black and white video promotion for Dennis Rodman and Hollywood Hogan. They're both not on the show this week, but you can hardly tell. Uh, same with Bischoff and Nash. Uh, all four guys, Hogan, Rodman, Bischoff, and Nash are all not on the show, but the star power was good on this one, and uh, they did a nice little video package, really cool NWO-style video package to promote Batch at the Beach and to show what happened last week on Nitro when Rodman was involved. In the main event in the ring we, for Nitro, we had DDP take on Scott Hall. Scott Hall wasn't alone, though, as he had Randy Savage and Elizabeth, who came with him from the NWO with him. DDP came out, and then Hall, uh, he was with Kimberly, but Kimberly leaves the match early and says, I don't want any part of this. DDP has a mystery partner for Bash of the Beach against these two, Savage and Hall, so one people wonder if it's Sting. They chant, we want Sting, and Hall looks to the roof of the rafters and says, he ain't here. And then he did this woo woogie 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 to DDP who ended up beating on him. DDP has sore ribs, so Hall dissected the ribs in this match. Uh, when the referee, when he was thrown to the outside on the referee, Savage threw the DDP into the guardrail, continuing their hot feud, and it would hurt the ribs of DDP even more. DDP with an atomic drop and a big right to Savage who points to him on the outside. Hall then uh, a back body drop and then a cheap shot. DDP uh, against the, more offense against the ribs and Hall distracts the official while Savage gets in another cheap shot. DDP was going to go for the diamond cutter and Savage recognized this so Savage hit him. DDP wins by DQ I gave the match a star and a quarter in the end Sting shows up and in the crowd he points his bat towards Savage and Hall and then they did the elbow drop from Savage to DDP so DDP gets some help as Sting runs to the ring and beats them both up with bats with his bat as the fans go nuts. Quality rating wise, I rate this Nitro a 7 out of 10 in my opinion. It was just really good to great. You didn't notice the star power was gone. We had some good matches on the card. Flair turned on Piper. The Sting ending. Again, this is week 88 of the Wars. Nitro won 3.3 to 2.4. And a 7 out of 10 in my opinion. I thought this Nitro had a lot for missing Holman, Robin, Nash, and Bischoff. 
Anyway, hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next Nitro Review. I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.